So I'm going to go over how you can interface with Linux CNC to servo drivers. Um, it's actually quite easy. Uh, a lot of people get caught up with it. It's not, not too difficult. It's more difficult if you go for the analog route because you're then working with uh, Maso cards, Mesa cards. I don't know how they pronounce it. So I'm going to go over kind of the difference. Don't just rule of thumb, don't, if you have a servo drive that works with brush lists, don't put it with a brush servo motor and vice versa. Weird things can happen. I have no idea what will happen, but I'm just saying weird things will happen. It might burn out your motor. It might not. I have no idea what happens. I just know that there's a distinction between the two. So warning, make sure you know that. Um, if you go the analog route, you're going to have an open loop, more than likely an open loop servo driver since it's an older style and all an open loop does is instead of going to uh, the encoder going to the servo driver it's going to go back to whatever is interfacing to the servo motor so for me that's the, the maso miso card i don't know how they pronounce it um i've heard it pronounced like both ways but i know there's a mass o card that's its own product individual for cnc really confusing thing there uh, mass Mesa 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 I don't know anyways I use the um, 7 i77 daughter board and that's your analog daughter board so opposed to the board that goes inside the computer which is uh, I want to say uh, 5 i25 was what I used I'd have to look don't quote me on that I'll put asterisks in the corner if I get that wrong anyways that works great for your analog and your old uh, systems your old systems being anything that has an analog servo. So if you're retrofitting an old machine like I did, uh, which was a retrofit of a retrofit, you can easily interface with it and there's no shenanigans going on. Also, the channels, I used three phase, three channel encoders, I guess you might call them. I think they're channels. I've heard them called channels and I've heard them called phases. Um, I just call them channels. Because there's three, there's three separate wires and a positive and negative for each one of them. So there's six wires all together plus two for your five volt common and five volt positive. With that all said, there's a lot going on and there's a lot more wiring when it comes to these analog rigs as opposed to a digital rig. Now, digital rig, I've had this. I'm doing two videos in a row, so I'm, I'm going to show you this guy again. I have seen people just interface with these and then they use the step and direction from a stepper motor and they interface with the gecko drives and the gecko drives are set up to function like that as far as I know. Um, they function like that and I've seen people just set these up and then run Linux CNC off one of these cheap $30 boards. I think I paid $34 for this the more I think about it. But anyways, then you get the um, whatever it would cost or if your computer already has it built in parallel port card or if it's built in just use a parallel port that exists and then run it with this guy now that has the advantage because for every axis you're only having two lines coming off this for your digital out um, as opposed to the analog card that I just showed you um, the manual for and this is a beast of a manual if you ever get into this one this one is uh, there's enough resources out there to make it easy, but it can be a nightmare. It's, it was very confusing for me. Anyways, so for your digital, this guy, two, guard, uh, two cords going out to your servo driver, your digital servo drivers, closed loop digital servo drivers will not need those encoders going back to it. You can actually loop with a closed loop. You're supposed to loop it back, the encoders back into the servo driver itself that's why it's closed loop is because it's a loop there itself it's not going back to a control board or anything like that nothing weird like that so it makes it so much cleaner and furthermore they use more modern encoders which instead of the three channel they're two channel which are quite a few less wires um, with that it, it it cleans up a huge amount of wiry mess now I have not set up one of these before so I can't give you step by step how to do it but that's how you would go through um, and set it up is with one of those gecko drives and it's set up to take step and direction just like um, 
just like a stepper motor. So now, and then I'm going to show you, let me flip through this real quick. I'm going to cut to it, but then I'm going to show you where the terminal blocks for your encoders are in this document. So in terminal block three, you have your individual um, points of reference. Then you got, you know, you got your ground, which is your common in this case. Uh, they just call it ground. Being DC, it is common. And then you have your five volts. So make sure you're not plugging one of these channels into five volt. But then you have your um, subsequent channels. So two channels, ground, two channels, plus and minus, ground, two channels, ground. So there you have your three channels, plus or minus for each one of them, of course. That's what the, uh, the slash is right there. Almost forgot, this board is set up to, to run six axes, so it has to have a multiple number of channels, so a, a, a quite a large number of uh, terminal blocks set aside for that. So you have terminal block two, or four in this case, the second terminal block that is, um, set up just for your, just for your um, encoder all over again, and these are rotary encoders that they use. I don't know too much about the, uh, the, uh, linear encoders in this case I have seen machines that run them I don't know if Linux CNC will support that I've never seen someone run that so I can't speak on uh, linear rail uh, linear linear encoders but be as it is you're gonna have servo motors anyways so they're gonna have encoders on them to keep track of where you are so so here you can see your encoders set up right here on this so here's terminal block three and terminal block four right there so you put both you would you would assign axes to these encoders and then you can set it up that way then you have your drive block down here which is terminal block five and this is where you would put your signal for your signal out for your your servo driver to communicate to your servo driver. Now, I thought originally that it was the first two that you would use on these blocks that you pull out. However, it's the, f the third and fourth. Um, a bit of a confusion. Read this, go through it, make sure you know what you're doing. Um, it's not like you're gonna burn out your analog servo drivers unless it's for some really weird voltage, like one volt or something like that, with um, 10 plus or minus voltage on a servo driver as a standard. Uh, for analog, I'd be very hard pressed to think that by plugging a servo driver into the wrong one on this board, unless it's a 25 volt, 24 volt pin. Um, I don't think you would burn out a board. But still, be very careful when it comes to that because if you do something wrong, you could end up grounding it or doing something crazy like that. Anyways, I'm gonna pull up the, uh, the page on terminal block five. All right, then that's how you would to, then you would set up your signals. I used um, what people from the forum said to use, essentially. I use the ground and the analog out zero. Zero being the placeholder for one in most machine languages. So then you have analog out zero, then analog out one. That's just how they do it. Yeah, it's 10 plus or minus volts that uh, this card gives out. So just small note there. Not a bad setup, not a bad way to choose set it up. Your mileage may vary, vary. With some of these old servo drivers, for instance, if you were open up a, uh, a new cabinet now, servo drivers kind of just look all the same. They're just blocks with, you know, terminal blocks where you can plug in or, or you know, do something along those lines of interfacing with it. These old ones just look like any PCB you might find off the shelf somewhere for an old computer. With newer analog servo drivers, I don't know what you're going to get. You might need to use some of these other signals. Um, for my setup, I only needed to use those two signals. So your mileage might vary. 
so fair warning upon uh, that. I uh, I do believe that's all I have. It's not hard to set it up. And there are plenty, 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 plenty of resources. There are plenty of forums. Um, the Linux CNC forum is probably the best. If you have time if and you want to look into studying either the digital, which I mentioned at the beginning of this video, which I cannot give direct or explicit instructions how to do, uh, or like the signals out. Like I can't give explicit instructions how to do that, how you would tune it and stuff like that because your mileage may vary in between individual servo drivers. Something might need some extra stuff that I'm not aware of. Again, I can speak just a little bit of how I know how to set it up in theory about how to do this guy, but I don't know everything that it comes to how to set up those um, particular servo drivers because I've never worked with them. I've just seen how they they work essentially and I wanted to give that to you as an option and give you a secondary option which is the one I had to go with since I already had the drivers and just say hey this is what I did this is how I did it you might get something totally different if you blow up your servo drivers it's not my fault because I don't know what servo drivers you're running this is just how I did it this is my experience doing it uh, good luck I hope it works for you if you are going with one of these boards because they're not cheap for the board that runs into the PCI Express slot it's hundred bucks for the board the uh, the daughter board outside this one right here it's another hundred bucks so which isn't too bad when it comes to the world of CNC so anyways that's all I have for this video but anyways if you like this video um, just comment down below do whatever if you have any questions just feel free to comment or go to the forums and and say something in the forums put a question in the forums see if anybody else has already put a question in the forums those forums are pretty much a gold mine and there are just a few really really knowledgeable people that i keep coming across in those forums that seem to seem to know just about everything there is to know about it even though that i'm sure there isn't they don't they don't know everything but it's, it's a really good community. You should check it out and look at it and look into it and see what, what solution would work the best for you. But anyways, that's all I've got for this video. So I will see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.